Hello, my dear friend. Happy Monday. And in this video, you are going to see and hear something very, very different. This is not a normal YouTube video. This is a podcast episode. I have just recorded a, a, a podcast episode on Sparkle. Se você não conhece o aplicativo Sparkle, eu vou deixar aqui embaixo. Na, na descrição deste vídeo, o link para você acompanhar é grátis. Você pode baixar no seu aplicativo, não tem custo nenhum e é muito, muito útil e muito dinâmico. É muito legal. All right? Bom, se você quiser saber mais sobre esse aplicativo Sparkle, eu vou deixar aqui no vídeo o link para outros vídeos que eu falo deste aplicativo. Right now, I am going to talk about this podcast episode I have just published, and it's also, oh, it's also on SoundCloud. It's on my SoundCloud channel. So I'm going to leave down below the link to the SoundCloud channel where you can follow me too. You can follow all my audios. You can listen to all my audios which is really, really cool. Okay, in this audio that I recorded firstly on Sparkle, and everybody who follows me on Sparkle gets to listen to it first, I talk about these private English schools in Brazil, os famosos cursinhos de inglês aqui no Brasil. I do sort of an analysis on these uh, English schools. I have worked in these English schools for over 18 years. Right? I have been doing this. I have been teaching people um, how, to, how to improve their English and how to improve their communication skills for over 25 years. Right? So I've got some experiences and some stories and impressions that I can share with you um, about going to a, to a private English school here in Brazil. I also posted a video on Sparkle in which I ask my followers to comment, telling us their experiences and their impressions on these uh, private English schools, right? Even if they haven't um, done any of these uh, courses, uh, I ask them to share with us their experiences with uh, learning, with their English learning uh, process. Anyway, um, so I recorded this 15-minute video, so I'm going to stop the video now, and, but you can listen. So I'm going to put this image here, so you will watch this image, but the most important is the audio, so enjoy the audio, all right? Leave your comment down below if you liked it, and if you enjoy this channel, yeah, subscribe to it, and we'll keep on posting more good stuff to you. All right, thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you on the next video or audio here on YouTube. Thank you so much, and let's listen. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the So Promised podcast episode exclusive here on Sparkle. So first off, I would like to thank you for following this track. Thank you so much for trusting Sparkle, this wonderful app in which I can, you know, give you my best content, give you my best classes, my best videos, my best audios and images too, right? I just love this app. It's a, it's a really good app. Anyway, um, on my uh, last week, actually, I, I posted a Spark here, video Spark here on uh, Sparkle, promising that I would uh, record a podcast episode all in English talking about private English schools. And on that video, I'm going to leave the link to that video here so you can refer. Uh, I asked people, I asked you, the followers, to place a comment in the video telling us their experiences with, um, with private English schools, if they had none or if they had how it was, right? And it was amazing. It was amazing. We got about 24 comments. So thank you so much. Now, if you still want to go back to that video and leave your comment, go there and leave your comment there, or you can leave your comment down below 
here as well as you are listening to this to this episode to this audio spark here on uh, Sparkle. And the topic was about uh, private English schools and uh, lots of people. I would like to well, actually, I would like to thank uh, all these people, starting with uh, Luis Holtz, Marta Meiri, Monica Pastori. Uh, the guys from Troopers Hot Mart, thank you so much. Emerson, Sean, uh, Beatrice, Ivani, Rodrigo Lopez, Magnolia, Nogueira, who else? Pachi43, Israel from Sparkle, thanks man. Uh, Orival, Ana Maria. Anderson Gilbert, Clauber Souza. Uh, there's a guy here, very interesting comment, but I don't know his name. It's S084514. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Ricardo Cabrera Puerto. All right, Robinson Menezes, Santos Borges, Cayuga. They all left their um, impressions and their experiences with um, going to, to private English schools. Uh, you know what? We had comments, positive comments about, about going to English, uh, to English schools, like Israel had a good, good experience. Um, most of them, most of them, they don't really, uh, they don't really express a negative experience, but a frustrating experience. Right, and, and that's the most interesting thing. I was an English teacher in private English schools for so many years, and I had to teach and I had to use the method that the school uh, gave me to use. Right, so I had to follow the school's standards and methods to to teach the students. Uh, some schools have good methods, some schools don't have so good methods, but they all have something in common. And you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Most of them, and, I, and I'm not going to generalize this, okay? Because I don't know all the private English schools established here in Brazil. But with my experience, I could notice some um, common traits among these um, these private English schools. And what is this common thing that we find in these private English schools? Very simple. Instead of being uh, a training academy, right? Instead of being a place where you were going to train, you're going to practice your English, uh, they all consider themselves a place in which you are going to learn and they are going to teach. So they always uh, uh, use this parallel of teacher and English, uh, teacher and English, teacher and student relationship. Okay, I'm the teacher and I am here to teach. But the thing is, the English teacher in one of these, uh, in, in most of these um, uh, private schools, they teach just like a professor in the university, right? They go to the whiteboard and they start writing metrics and structures and explanations on how the language works. So you sit down, look at the teacher, look at the board, and learn what he is teaching, but what he's actually teaching is about the language. They're not really uh, having you practice what they are teaching, right? They don't give you the opportunity. They don't give you, you know, they don't give you a lot of opportunities to practice. And that's what, you know, a learning English is all about, is all about practice. So you go to these English schools, você senta lá no, 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 no banquinho, na sala com mais um monte de gente, fica olhando para o professor, olhando para o quadro, e o professor dando uma palestra sobre a língua. 
o que, que você pode fazer, o que, que você não pode fazer em determinada situação. Aí ele pega e dá uma explicação longa sobre simple present, simple past, right? A present perfect, como é que você faz uma pergunta, como é que você não faz uma pergunta, and so on. Então vira uma palestra sobre, sobre o idioma. And that's why lots of people get frustrated. Why? Because they go there for years and years and years. They understand. They understand all about English. É mais ou menos como aquele, aquela pessoa que sabe tudo sobre automóvel, sabe tudo com o funcionamento do automóvel, como é que o automóvel funciona, mas não sabe entrar no carro, ligar e mover o veículo e dirigir o veículo para onde ele quer. That's pretty much about it. Right? É exatamente isso que acontece. The student goes there and learns a lot of, of grammar rules, a lot of, a lot of structures, and he can't or she can't use it. So that's why it gets so frustrating, right? Now, is this a problem with the English schools? Well, I think it's a problem, all right? Now, is it their fault? É culpa deles? Not really. Because for so many years, this was the traditional method of teaching a language. Right? And, uh, the, the language teacher era a eminência parda, igual qualquer outro professor em, em numa faculdade, numa escola. Né? Inclusive, até hoje, as pessoas me tratam como professor. Nossa, professor, oh professor, oh professor. I don't consider myself a teacher. I consider myself a guide, um guia, right? A coach, que hoje está em moda, né? A palavra coach. A coach that guides you into the practice of listening and speaking. E é esse que é o pulo do gato, all right? Você não deve procurar um professor, você deve procurar um cara que te guie para dentro deste mundo de escutar, entender e conseguir falar em in, in English. Do you know what I mean? So, that is the problem with English schools. Eu acredito que você, para começar a falar, para começar a entender e falar inglês, you don't need to study a lot. You need to practice a lot. And to practice English is very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. E por ser muito desconfortável, fica perigoso para essas escolas da pessoa desistir logo de cara, porque é muito desconfortável no início. Right? Então, o que acontece é que, claro, essas pessoas precisam, essas pessoas, essas escolas precisam manter seus alunos ali pagando mensalidade, bonitinho. Então, elas têm que fazer, de alguma forma, você sentir que está progredindo. Well, quando isso, quando isso é no começo, é até muito interessante. Só que, quando você começa a perceber a dificuldade e, e o desconforto que é começar a treinar, a, a conseguir se comunicar em inglês, a vontade de desistir é muito grande. É muito grande. E aí você percebe que um ou dois dias na semana is not enough. Okay? It's not enough to reach a very good or a certain level of English fluency. E aí daí sai a frustração. Porque, por quê? Porque as escolas utilizam este método tradicional, que é te dar um livro, é colocar você para fazer exercícios, right? É fill in the blanks, é preencher as lacunas, entender gramática, right? But the point is, we only learn, really learn how to use gr some grammar structures after we are already using them sem saber. Entende? Então você começa... A, a, vale a pena estudar gramática? Sim, vale demais. Vale a pena você aprimorar a forma que você está falando inglês? Sim, a forma que você está escrevendo, a sua prática de leitura. Tudo isso vale a pena depois que você já ganhou uma certa prática em conseguir se comunicar, 
até mesmo sem saber que estrutura que você está usando. But what happens here in Brazil is the other way around. É o oposto. It's exactly the other way around. Right? You first learn the structure, you first learn the grammar rules, and then you start listening and practicing and start using them. That's not how we learn a language, and that's why people get frustrated. Eu tô aqui dizendo que escolas de inglês nunca mais vão funcionar? No. Elas estão mudando. As, as escolas estão, in, inclusive, porque os alunos, os clientes, você aí que está escutando, está se tornando um pouco mais conhecedor de formas mais inteligentes de, de você aplicar métodos mais inteligentes e mais práticos para ter um resultado de comunicação mais rapidamente. Right? And that is the point. Então, eu fiquei muito feliz de ver esses, esses comments, right? Uh, like um, uh, Anderson. Anderson says, man, I go to Yaziji two hours a week. And there is no way a person can learn like that, right? E ele continua. I've seen a lot of, a lot of uh, classes that is such a waste of time. With, you know, little jokes, games, you know, little stories. And they don't motivate you, truly. They don't motivate you to practice English. Ele continua. You know, I, I, I miss... You know, a, um, a speaking laboratory, podcasts, anything that makes you practice. There was very little conversation and a lot of grammar, right? Então, and thank you, and thank you, Anderson, uh, for your comment. And this is, esse tipo de comentário é bem generalizado. É a grande maioria das pessoas tem, costumam ter esse tipo de frustração que o Anderson Gilbert has. Now, is there a solution for this? Eu, será, que, será que eu posso ajudar com uma solução? If you are going to, to an English school, don't stop going. Não pare de ir, ok? Mas é importante você entender que um ou dois dias por semana não vai funcionar. É interessante você continuar praticando as aulas, se você puder, indo para as aulinhas com o professor. Se você gosta da aula, já é uma boa, já é meio caminho andado. Para se você vai para a aula e sai dela achando que foi um saco, that's a problem. Leave the school. Quit. And find something else to, to improve your English with. All right? Bom, nós chegamos já, estamos a, a 14 minutos e meio. O limite deste podcast chega a 15. Não tem jeito, né? Eu vou ter que fazer uma part 2 about this topic. Não, eu quero aproveitar esses últimos 30 segundos para pedir para que você deixe o seu foguinho aí, my friend. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, deixe o seu comentário. Deixe o seu comentário se você realmente quer que eu faça uma part 2. E também escreva aí o que mais sobre você, o que você quer que eu fale sobre this experience wow. of learning. Se você chegou English. até aqui, é porque de right, tá legal mesmo. So much, my right? Bom, se você and gostou, the next subscribe to the channel. And, very important, você viu que este, este áudio foi gravado para o pessoal do Sparkle. Se você quiser seguir, me seguir lá no Sparkle, eu vou deixar as instruções aqui embaixo, um link para você se inscrever e usar o meu convite. É só através de um convite que você usa essa rede social, que é muito legal. Alright? Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video and audio, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.